Hey pilots, this is Pete with BananaHobby.com. Welcome to your what's in the box review and build review of the FMS Park Flyer size Cessna 182 Skylane. This is a gorgeous little Cessna 182 and it's in the perfect little Park Flyer size that uh, we call Park Flyers because they're uh, just the perfect size to take down to your local ball fields and uh, you know uh, local uh, football fields, local baseball fields and your local park and be able to fly these things and with extremely minimal build time as well. This Cessna 182 will come in at just under 40 inches of wingspan. I believe the wingspan is 39.7 inches in wingspan. Full electric power, so it's nice and quiet, nice and clean, and um, you're pretty much, uh, you know, at the field flying a cool little Cessna. So with that said, let's go ahead and start breaking down the Cessna 182 and what comes out of the box here. Uh, we are uh, pretty much getting going again with all the uh, build reviews and the flying reviews and all the what's in the box reviews that I know a lot of you have been asking for. And make sure you, uh, you stay tuned because the, uh, the Ask Pete webisodes are looking to come back online very, very shortly here as well. So thank you for all your participation with that. And I look forward to hearing from you for uh, those webisodes as well. So this is the first time that I'm going to take this little Cessna 182 out of the box for you. So please bear with me as we move along here and see what comes inside this little Cessna 182 Skylane here. Let me get a little hobby knife here and go ahead and start cutting stuff. Okay, the first thing that we come out is your manual. FMX, FMS does a really good job as far as uh, detailed manuals and with this with this Cessna, you get your build, you get your actual build manual, and then you get your uh, ESC programming manual as well. So we're going to go ahead and set the manual aside. Let's take a little gander here. Yeah, pretty basic stuff. So when we start the build, we'll go through the manual and see where we go with uh, with that. Go ahead and put this aside here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just start taking stuff out here. So this little Cessna 182 comes to you, ships just like this, a uh, small little box, and just. From the looks of things, it's an extremely scale little Cessna. So let's go ahead and uh, start taking things out. Everything's pretty snug in here. Nothing's going to bounce around. You're not going to break anything during the shipment here. And if you do, we carry full part support as well. So let's go ahead and start taking things out here. First thing that's going to come out, that's going to come out, is your fuselage. Wow, good looking little fuselage. Let's go ahead and get my pair of handy dandy scissors here. And let's go ahead and cut the... Well, actually, I don't even need to cut it. The front's already open here. Oh, awesome. There we go. Let's get the bag out of here. Look at that. What a good-looking little Cessna. Perfect size, too. All the decals are pre-applied. Push rods are already ran, all, already ran for you. A little scale exhaust-looking pipes there and everything. Um, looks like it's going to be a three-bladed propeller setup. Just a gorgeous little Cessna. And the, uh, let's go ahead and open the bottom up here and take a look here. Let's see here, the speed control is going to be a 20 amp brushless ESC and the plug on here I believe is 2 cell and it's going to be a JST style plug. So we're going to go ahead and plug that back in there and your servo layout is going to be right under here. You know what I like about FMS products is the fact that they use what's called easy connectors. I'll show it to the camera over here. These are little silver things here, they're called easy connectors. They have one little 1.5 millimeter set screw in there and you're able to extremely easily adjust the push rod lanes. Uh, it's not easy bended on one side so that it's, it's uh, you can't adjust it from this side. You can adjust it actually from both sides so that makes it really, really convenient there. Beautiful little Cessna 182 here. Scale canopy here, uh, scale cockpit with uh, some instrument panels and everything too as well. Okay, let's go ahead and set the fuselage aside and get into the main wing section. All right, look at that. Beautiful main wing. Let's go ahead and take the plastic off of it. Okay, so the main wing is one piece, one piece main wing, and it is uh, wing sparred already, so you don't have to spar it with anything. So it's pretty uh, extremely rigid, extremely strong. Look at this beautiful little wing here. It has all the the panels cut out and everything here. And uh, this is your basic four channel setup. So it's just your generic flying wing. Pretty much uh, you have your, your throttle, your elevator, your aileron, and your rudder. And it gives you an optional channel five here or channel six, whichever you opt for, for flaps. 
it does give you the, the control horns already cut out, so that's something that's not included. If you choose to modify it yourself and uh, incorporate flaps into this model, you can put flaps in it as well. Main wings bolt down with two bolts, and there are, there are navigation lights on it. We've got one on the left wing, and then on the leading edge, and then two, one on each wing tip. So I look forward to seeing those light up. Just a beautiful little kit here. And this is full EPO foam construction, so the, uh, the density of the foam is, is pretty high, and it's extremely, extremely durable. These things take a good tumble, and you know you pick them up back up and uh, pretty much fly them again here. Okay, let's go ahead and get out the, this is the vertical stabilizer. Again, everything is pretty much ready to go. It looks like there's a nav light on the vertical stabilizer too. And we don't want to mix up the bags here because FMS, they have the control horns, uh, con control surface horns, they staple it to the bag so you know exactly which ones go where because the screw lanes are, uh, are different. So let's go ahead and set this little vertical stabilizer down. Keep coming, keep getting stuff out of the bag here. All right, this is the horizontal stabilizer. So again, real simple. Um, EPO foam, it's very clean. Got the little accessory bag hanging there as well. So let me go ahead and set that down and get into this bag has wing struts. So We've got wing struts, good looking little scale wing struts here. I'm going to set that aside. And next thing to come out is your scale landing gear. Let's take a look at the landing gears here. Nice. Look at that. Extremely scale landing gears with uh, plastic wheel pant covers and everything to make it, to give it the extra scale realism look there. Just a good looking pair of uh, landing gears here. Yeah, you know when you love airplanes is that when you're looking at them and building them and things like that, things that excite you are scale replica, you know, when they have landing gears that are <laughs> extremely scale and you get excited about that. Then you know you're an airplane addict, helicopter addict too. So we have the nose gear, which is steerable, extremely scale. Look at that beautiful little wheel pan and all the, the markings and the uh, pinstriping already pretty much done up for you there, ready to go. And the last thing to come out, well, actually, not the last thing. Oh, look. Scale little three-bladed propeller. How cute is that? This is a park flyer size, just under 40 inches. This is a great little size Cessna here. Beautiful scale, three-bladed propeller. Composite, composite blend of some sort um, and plastic, and it's really strong, too. Perfect. And we have the accessory bag. This accessory bag will have some aesthetic stuff on it, some extra uh, control clevises, things like that. Uh, they give you a pair of screwdriver, uh, one screwdriver, one Phillips screwdriver. You have some push rods in here and your Y-split, Y-harnesses for the lights, uh, for the ailerons and uh, all the servos in there. So we're going to set that aside. And FMS will include a tube of what's called rubber cement, which is stuck in the bag box right now. Okay, let's get it out from the other side then. What this rubber cement is here, this is uh, the supplied glue and it's rubber cement. For this type of a park flyer size aircraft, I don't suggest you use epoxy on any of the wing surfaces or the tail surfaces just because if in the, if in the, if in the fact that you need to replace the part, uh, like the tail section or something, rubber cement pulls right apart. And uh, it's almost like, uh, like gum almost when you, uh, when you start pulling it apart. And you can actually remove it with your fingers. It'll just come right off the surface. So this way you can actually replace the pieces in the back if you break anything. However, you know, it's personal preference. If you choose to use epoxy, you can use epoxy. But we're going to do the build today all with their supplied rubber cement. Okay. Well, with that, that's pretty much uh, everything that comes out of the box here with this little park flyer size Cessna. And we're going to go ahead and just jump right into the build portion of it and uh, just give you guys and gals out there a rundown of the build process with this little Cessna. You can opt to get this as your ready-to-fly format, so you can get it with the, uh, with the radio system. You can get it with a 4-channel, 2.4 gigahertz radio system from us, or you can opt to use your own. So with this build here, today we have me knocking stuff over. We have the FMS radio system on 2.4 that we have here that we may possibly use, or if you opt for guys out there that have your own radio systems, I know there's a lot of radio systems like Fataba, Aerotronics, High Tech, JR Spectrum. Um, we are going to use my own JR9503 
and park flyer receiver. This is the uh, AR6100E. And I think we're going to go ahead and install this system in it and uh, pretty much get going from there. So with that, we are going to go ahead and bring that camera in for a tighter view so you can see the hands-on build of this FMS Cessna 182. All right, now that we have the camera in with a tighter angle here, we are going to basically just get down into the build here of this uh, beautiful little Cessna here. Some basic tools that I always have when I build uh, aircrafts, airplanes, um, I'll have a 1.5 millimeter uh, hex driver, a various, few various sizes of Phillips head, so we have a couple sizes here, one longer one, and uh, one flathead screwdriver. And then you have your, your basic uh, hobby knife. Be careful, hobby knives are extremely sharp. A pair of scissors and a couple of uh, sizes of needle nose pliers. You may need them, you may not need them. Uh, they're always good to have, handy, uh, you know, have around here. So let's go ahead and jump into this build. I'm going to go ahead and open up the manual here. Let's take a look here. See what the manual says here for assembly. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Well, the manual. Let's go ahead and see what, how far we can follow the manual. Usually, with this, um, I usually don't follow the manuals because I like to go in my own route. But in this sense here, this manual is pretty clear with FMS. So let's go ahead and start with what the manual suggests us to do. Which first step is we're going to flip her upside down, and looks like we are installing the main gears. And the good thing with uh, EPO foam, EPO foam you can use super glue. Regular cyanocrylate uh, CA super glue adheres to, to, to uh, EPO foam and it doesn't eat it. But uh, it's still best when you go to use super glue on foam. You want to test it in a little spot that's inconspicuous and see if it actually eats the foam. It shouldn't. So let's see what this says here. All right. So we have a couple of gear covers here. Let's go ahead and find... The accessory bag, accessories, okay. they actually staple that together. Okay, let's see here, get everything out, okay, looks like, looks like these are the gear covers. Okay, go ahead and get that out of there. These two antennas are for uh, aesthetic looks on top of the main wing later on, so it looks like these are the two covers here. and. What these are, are they're just, they're going to press in and they're going to press the gears all the way down. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to insert the gear into the slot here for the Cessna. They want us to install the main gears. So we're going to remove this, remove that hatch there so we can see that visible there. And the main gear, I'm going to go ahead and slide this right there, slide that in, pop that up, push it down. And uh, in the accessory bag that we opened earlier, You'll have two of these uh, flat pieces here, and you'll notice that one side of it is actually rounded off. So that's the side we need to insert into here. So let's go ahead and press that side down there. And let's see, we're going to go ahead and see what. Okay, we're going to go ahead and insert these into place here, push them down. Okay, and it says here now we are going to use a bit of super glue and just actually just put a little bit of super glue right on the seam here. on that little flat piece that, that we had just inserted into here. There we go. A little bit of super glue there. And that's pretty much done. Make sure the super glue is not dripping everywhere. And you're pretty good to go there. Okay, we're going to take that cover off. Okay, and the next piece that they're telling us, we're going to go ahead and put the super glue away before we get super glue everywhere we are going to do the nose gear. So with the nose gear, we need to remove the cowling. So let's go ahead and pop the spinner off. See how the spinner comes off here. Okay, so the spinner is off. It goes a 
little nut on there. Got to get that off there. Okay, so we got that off. Get the cowl off here. A little snug. There we go. And there is a collar in here for the nose wheel that we have to line up here. So let's go ahead and grab this. Okay, so if you look, I don't know if you can see that or not, but if you look down there, there's a collar in there. And that is the control horn for the nose wheel. So we're going to go ahead and try to insert this into here. And now you got to get a pair of needle nose in there and try to, we got to line that up real quick here so we can get the nose wheel in. There we go. Okay. Right now we need to loosen the rudder, the rudder servo and the push rod because there is a 1.5 millimeter screw on the front of this arm that we need to tighten down right now. So we're going to go ahead and move that to 90 degrees here and loosen this screw. This is the set screw that I was talking about here. Okay, so this way you can take another look here. I did move that to 90 degrees so that the set screw is visible and uh, there's a flat portion milled out or uh, flattened out on the shaft of the nose wheel so that's the area where you want to line up with the nose wheel here so we're going to go ahead and tighten this down now okay now that that's tightened you want to make sure you don't over tighten that because it is um, it is going into plastic there. We're going to go ahead and cinch this little 1.5 millimeter screw here down just a tad and then we can adjust the nose wheel for steering, uh, steering you know, straightness later on here. Okay, so that's pretty much done there. Okay, we got the main gears on. So let's go ahead and flip the Cessna back onto her landing gears. Nice. Okay, let's see. The next step they want us to do is they want us to go ahead and put the cowling back on. Well, before I put the cowling back on, you see that there's visible screws on here. So it never hurts to go ahead and uh, go once over and uh, make sure all these screws are tight. There's two set screws on the main shaft, on the prop shaft there, and then we got, you know, a couple of Phillips screws here that holds the motor to the firewall and then to the motor mount. So all those are tight. Take a look. You know, it never hurts. So let's go ahead and put the cowl back on. There we go. We just pressure fitted back on. So that's ready to go. And the next step here, they are asking us to do the main wings. And this is where I will skew off of the actual directions because there's some things that I like to do first and foremost that makes things a lot easier um, during the build here. So what we're going to do now is we are going to put all the control, all the control clevises and uh, control surface horns onto the the, uh, air, the airplane itself before we actually start installing the main pieces because this way everything is pretty much on there ready to go and when you're ready to center everything you can uh, pretty much you know jump right into it. FMS does a great job as far as they label all the bags so you know these are for the ailerons so you want to put the push rods back in there because we're not using them as of yet. We're going to do the control horns first. Okay we're going to flip the wing here. Okay, This is your control surface horn and uh, remember this side here will be facing the servo or facing the actual push rod. So this is going to be facing the servo in this case here. Okay, we're going to press that in. Okay, and we're going to flip it and we're going to put the uh, control horn backing on there. And let's take a look at the screws here. Okay, the screws we have one long, one short. Okay, so you can kind of tell that the root of the aileron here will be thicker. So the longer Phillips screw will go into the top side there and the shorter one will go directly diagonally into there. And we're going to go ahead and grab the screwdriver and go ahead and just screw her down here. Okay. Remember this is a um, screw down into foam so you, there's no real reason to really tighten it down that uh, it's so tight that it actually distorts the foam and then it actually pulls through you know, to the other side. So we don't need to do that. So let's go ahead and do this side. Okay, we get the control service horn on there. Okay, let's get the backing on. Okay, long on 
the thicker side and the shorter Phillips screw on the, oop, there goes the screw, on the little bit thinner side here. Let's go ahead and start with this one. Okay, sometimes the screws don't line up, never fear, just try it again. Okay, next one. It's two, and I don't know if this one actually. Okay, that's about tight there. That's good. So we can call the wing here pretty much done. Um, all we have to do is center everything and uh, attach the aileron push rod. So we're going to put that aside. Let's go ahead and go to the horizontal stabilizer. Okay, you, now you can take this bag off because you know that's for the horizontal stabilizer here. Okay, I'm going to throw that aside here. Makes it easier to just cut that off. Okay, so we have all the pieces there. So right now we need to kind of look and see which one's up and which one's down. What side of the horizontal stabilizer is up and which one's down. And you can tell that this side here will be glued onto the surface. So this side will be down, this side is going to be up. And uh, the vertical stabilizer will actually glue into here. So we are going to mount the horns here underneath. Okay, once again, let's see, these screws for the elevator here are all the same length. So we just grab two and they go diagonally towards each other. Okay. And just remember this, you know, these these planes, they only have two screws per control surface horn. There is not going to be the need for four screws here. There's just not that much pressure on these uh, on these surfaces for it to actually need four. And then if in fact that you break one of these holes here, you can actually rotate it and then use the holes, use the same uh, backing again so you don't have to actually go buy parts there. So that's a pretty cool thing that FMS does there. Okay. Okay, let's get the other one in there. I know building airplanes seems to be a little tedious. Everybody just wants to get outside and fly, but Believe it or not, building it is actually part of the fun. You know, get your family together and everybody can sit down in the living room table or something like that and you can do a build together, you know? And uh, these are all one piece EPO hinges, so they're very, very strong. And in fact, that in case they do rip or something like that, you can use this glue. It's on the market called welder's glue and uh, you can buy it at Lowe's in your local hardware store and or you can actually just go and cut it and then put physical hinges in there. Your local hobby store would sell stuff like that. You can actually just replace the hinges too. All right, so we, we have the vertical stabilizer now. Let's go ahead and do the vertical stabilizer. Okay, Get all the goodies out of there, okay. And now we have to kind of take a look here what side the horn goes on. And you can take, you can see here, your elevator are your two lower ones here, okay? The top, top side here will be for your rudder. So that means that the horn here will need to go on the left hand, oh, I'm sorry, on the right hand side. And we always talk about the aircraft from uh, sitting in the cockpit standpoint or in the, the driver's seat. So we got the horn here. We have the horn installed on the right hand side. Okay, get the back end on there. And the screws are the same lanes again, so we just go ahead and diagonal it and start tightening it down. There you go. That, we'll call that about tight there. So that's perfect. That's pretty much ready to go. So now let's go back to the uh, manuals. See, the reason why I do that is that pretty much gets that out of the way. When you start installing the main wing on there and everything is on there, it's kind of hard to move the aircraft around and stuff to install all these parts. So sometimes I do that first, sometimes I do it later on, but in this sense here, we go ahead and uh, do it first here. So now they want us to go ahead and uh, put the main wing on there. This is where I will not follow the manual once again. The reason why is because um, the tail section is going to be a lot easier to install without the main wing being bounced all around here. So we're going to go ahead and just go to the tail section here. This is the supplied rubber cement. We're going to pop a hole in the tip there and we're going to use the supplied rubber cement here. We're going to go ahead and test fit the 
horizontal stabilizer. Okay. Make sure you think your view is a bit better this way here. I just can't reach your airplane all that good, but y'all can see it better. Okay. And the test fit and the test fit looks perfect. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off here and we can see that the glue is going to go all the way to here. So you're just going to apply glue to these areas here. And you don't have to be like, you know, a whole whole bunch of glue where it's going to seep out and stuff. This stuff, this rubber cement is pretty strong. So we just want to generously cover some areas here to the tip over here a little bit. And that's pretty much all you're going to need as far as glue on there. So be careful, don't get glue all over the place and slide that down on place. Take a look, slide it down, slide it right down into place. And then now what we're going to do is I'm going to slide it down. I'm going to look down the, the nose of the Cessna and make sure that the tail and everything is level. So in this case, it's pretty level there. And that pretty much is your tail. Your horizontal tail is pretty much done there. OK, so we're going to go ahead and do the vertical tail now. On the vertical tail, you're going to notice that there is one little tiny wire with a very small plug. This is for the tail, the tip LED here. So we, you want to make sure you plug that in before it goes in. So let's go ahead and uh, see that fit right there, test fit that. Actually, we don't need to test fit that one. That'll go right in. So a um, couple of ways here. You can actually apply glue and then plug this plug in. or plug this plug in now and then apply glue. So let's go ahead and plug this plug in now and see how much space we have to move with this plug plugged in there. Let's see. Check the uh, polarity of the plug there. So it goes this way. Actually, it's kind of hard to get hold of. So we're going to just go ahead and grab a pair of needle nose. Makes it a lot easier. And get that plug in there. Come on out. There we go. So. That is plugged in, so that's ready to go. And uh, vertical stabilizers don't have a lot of pressure on them, so I am going to go ahead and just uh, apply glue in this sense, in this position now, with the plug plugged in. It's a lot easier this way than to get glue on here and then try to sit there and plug it in and get it all over your sleeve and everywhere else you don't want glue. Okay. Just a little bit there. I think that about will do it. Now let's go ahead and take a look here and see where that wire goes. Looks like it just sits right down there. So let's go ahead and press this down. And get that wire out of the position, out of place a little bit there. That's why I have these, these screwdrivers. You can actually move the wires around. There we go. Okay, I have a feeling it's probably not going to go down all the way, but let's take a look. One thing we did not do, which we needed to do, which I did not notice, is that the push rod here needs to come to the top side. So you want to pull this out a little bit, okay, and then bring the push rod to the top side here. There we go. There's a slit cut out for it. Now you can push it all the way down. Slit here a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna push that tail all the way down now. And we have glue down there, so everything is pretty much good to go. So you want to make sure that I'm gonna show you this way here. That the push rod is actually coming out of the there's a slit cut right on top of here. So you want to make sure the push rod is actually coming out in this angle here. Make sure this is okay there. Okay. That looks about right. We have a little pinching in the foam there, which is no worries. It happens. Okay. So that's pretty good there. So I'm going to take a look down the line. Make sure it's nice and straight. And it looks nice and straight. Okay. So next up here. The manual calls for the main wings. So let's look for 
the main wing bolts. I, pr I think it's pretty sure it's these right here. It's in this bag here with the little uh, Allen wrench. They're just two, two uh, Phillips head self-tapping screws here. Okay, so now we have to, you want to make sure you take a look here because when you install the main wings, first thing we need to do right now is we need to take this tape off because that jumbo portion of wires there are all going to be coming down here. Okay. All of this will be going into this hole here down, let's see, should we do this now? No, we're going to go ahead and do it. Uh, we'll connect the connectors later. These are all numbered there and labeled, and it's going to go connect into your uh, Y harnesses in a little bit. So right now what we need to do is we need to kind of eyeball this and uh, insert all of this into this little cylinder here and make sure it actually travels through there and not get stuck and come out from the other side so we can access them to plug them in later. Okay, so I need to flip the plane right now, this doesn't it? And uh, let's see over here. Okay, so we have a bunch of wires coming out now. So we need to go ahead and successfully grab all the wires. Probably be easier with a pair of needle nose once again. There we go. Yeah, key thing is right now is you just want to get them all out of that cylinder and out of the way and actually have them here to access when you need to plug them in to the receiver there. Okay, so that, I'm going to call that one pretty much all there and in the position. So we're going to go ahead and put the main wing down. Okay, line up the front two guide holes here. There we go, press that in and then the wing should come right down if all the wires are out of the way, which they are almost. Now they are perfect. So now that the wing wires are out of the way, we're going to go ahead and press this all the way down here. Okay, let's see, it's not all the way up there yet. There we go. Now it's in place. Okay, so these Phillips screws here, they go into the tops of the wing, the wing bolt holes here. And we're just going to screw them down now, right there. I hope this camera angle is okay. We're going to end up finishing this build, and I'm not going to be able to use any of this stuff because you can't see it. Okay, actually, it's going to be okay. Okay, let's see if that's lined up or not here. Nope, that's not lined up. Let's take a look down here. There we go. Now we're lined up. Let's go ahead and get one of them at least. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. And yeah, that one's lined up too. So we should be pretty good here. There we go. So we got grab. It's grabbing. So let's go ahead and tighten her down. Okay, just, just cinch her down. You don't have to really tighten this super tight yet, just uh, or at all. Just tighten it down so that it's nice and snug. Okay, so now we have the uh, Cessna 182 here, pretty much on main gears and main wings. As you can see there, secondary camera, pretty cool. Okay, let's go ahead and see what the manual tells us to do now. I'm pretty sure they're going to tell us to do the wing struts. Okay, let's go ahead and do the wing struts. Okay flip the beautiful little 182 upside down here. And in this bag here, we have the main wing struts, which uh, are going to be glued on there. So let's go ahead and grab this and see if they're, they are directional. So you want to take a look at the shape that's right here and the shape down here. And the area where it actually glues onto is here here and then here. So let's go ahead and find out what side is for what. What side goes where. Okay, so let's see here. And that is it. That is the perfect fitment right there. So we can test fit it. So we know this one goes to the left side and this one goes to the right side. Okay, so with this, these struts here, we pretty much can use, you can use your super glue or you can use uh, 
the rubber cement. And because it is on the main wing and there's a chance that you may need to change the main wing, I'm going to go ahead and use the rubber cement. It's a lot safer and it still has plenty of strength. You don't need a whole lot of glue. Just uh, go ahead and um, put it on the tabs here, a little bit on the top side, a little bit down the between side, a little bit of the dripping side. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this side first. And then we're going to slide this puppy in right there. And I forgot to get paper towels again. And I just spilled glue right on the fuselage, which is not a good thing. Okay, get the glue off my hand. And then you're going to have a little bit of residual glue coming out from the seams here, which is fine. This is just uh, rubber contact cement, basically. So you can just wipe it off with uh, a paper towel or, uh, or like a microfiber of some sort with a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol will be fine. Squeeze that a little bit there. Okay, that's me putting too much glue. There we go. Okay, I need to get this glue off of my hand before I touch anything else because it is all over my hand. Okay, let's go ahead and glue the other side down and not use too much glue this time. That's plenty. Right. Still have glue on my hand. I can feel it. There we go. Some residual glue there. Get it off. And that pretty much is your wing strut install there. Uh, because you are using the rubber cement, you want to go ahead and check the wing struts. Um, once you flip it over and uh, you start doing the, the radio configuration, so you want to check it a little bit later to make sure that the uh, wing struts are actually on there and uh, didn't slide out of position or anything like that. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're pretty much uh, pretty much done with the build, the main portion of the build. We are going to flip her right side up and uh, actually go into the radio configuration portion now. But I'm going to flip her right now just to take a look to make sure that the wings are level and the struts are on their level. Okay. Okay, we are looking pretty good here. Just want to get some of that glue off of there. All right, now that the uh, Cessna is pretty much completed here, we're going to flip her one more time while I hit the camera there, and we are going to install the radio equipment here. Uh, this portion here, you can opt for to use your own radio system, like I said, or you can use uh, the provided, or you can get it ready to fly from us with the uh, FMS kit as well, um, the 2.4 transmitter and receiver. Uh, this kit will include these little rubber O-rings here. What these little rubber O-rings are for is um, they are for you to open them with a pair of pliers like this and insert them onto the, let me, go, let me grab here, give an example here. There we go. You, should, you can do this beforehand or after. It doesn't really matter. The push rods here, there is a push rod clevis. On the clevises here, this is for secondary, uh, you know, like uh, reassuring so that uh, the clevises don't open on you. So you put these little O-rings on here, and then you press it home later on when you get the lanes adjusted, and then you push it forward. So we'll go ahead and talk about that in a little bit here. So right now, we need to locate all of those Y splitters that they gave you. They gave us here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, find the one that's listed channel number one, which is this right here. These are going to be your ailerons. So let's go ahead and find the channel number one. There's one of them, and there's a second one here. There you go. So we're going to plug in the Y splitter. Make sure the colors match on channel number one. These are your ailerons. Okay. Colors match. So that one is done. This one is marked channel number two. Which are your, which is basically your elevator, um, your elevator servos. But in this case, there's only one elevator servo, and the reason why there's three sides to this is because they use a piggyback system where all of the LEDs are operating off of this channel. So it's a real smart thing to do. Makes it really simple, real easy to work with. Okay, so there we go. Here we have channel number two. So just pick any channel here, any open port. Make sure the colors match. And you're good to go there. So we got four of them. So let's go ahead and match these two. There we go. These two. The other ones for the LEDs are only two wire. 
So you just got just make sure that the color matches on here. Uh, colors are the same exact color, so let's make sure they're all matching there. There we go, and one last one. And that matches, so that is good there. And uh, let's see here, we have one additional Y harness that they do provide in here, which I'm not sure what it's for because there is no flap, so maybe they give you an extra Y harness there. Yeah, I think that is an extra, unless you want to use it for an extension for the for the rudder servo, which is a little, it looks like it's a little short here. But anyway, that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and use the AR6100E. And we will start with channel number one into channel number, into uh, the aileron port here. Okay, so that's in. We'll go channel number two into the elevator port. Okay. Channel number three is your throttle. We'll go that goes into throttle here. And if you all are using the uh, the FMS supplied or any radio, uh, any other receiver system here, just long, make sure that all the copper terminals are facing upwards when you plug it into the receiver so that the polarity is correct there. Okay, so this is where we have a little bit of an issue here because the channel number four is a little bit short, but we can reach it. So we'll get that plugged into the rudder channel, which is your channel number four. Okay, so now that all of that is plugged in, we are now going to find out where all of this stuff goes here so that we can move it out of the way. Let's take a look at the manual and see if they tell you here. Okay. Okay, it looks like the battery positioning is back here, so we are going to just go ahead and, for now, we're just going to we're just going to go ahead and uh, get the battery wire, which is this one right here with the this is the JST style plug on it. Get that out of there, and we're just going to go ahead and tuck all of these wires in here for now, at least, so we can move forward with the the radio testing portion of it, and then we'll figure out where the battery goes a little bit here. Okay, make sure all the wing struts are still down. Okay, so everything's plugged in. The reason why I choose not to, actually my nose gear is a little loose, but we'll do that later. I uh, do not install the propeller yet, it's just because right now we're on the setup process and uh, you don't want a propeller to be spinning around your face when you're trying to set the thing up. So it's a little bit dangerous. So I do the propeller last, always last. So this plane does fly on your two cell 7.4 volt 1300 battery pack. So like I said, perfect little pack, uh, park flyer. Uh, these Genesis power. 40C1300, 7.4 volts. Uh, these are the Pete Signature series. These are great batteries, and uh, they're very, very inexp inexpensive as well. So you get yourself a you know, pocket full of these, charge them up, and go to the field. So we're going to go ahead and turn the transmitter on first. We're going to plug her in here and see if we get any kind of a beeping or anything reacting. There we go. That's pretty. Everything seems to power on good. OK. We have initiali initializing tone from the ESC, so saying that the motor is armed and pretty much ready to go here. So let's go ahead and check. Okay, Elevator direction is correct. Rudder direction looks like is correct. And your aileron direction looks like it's correct as well. So what we're doing now is we're going to, you could check to see if these are lined up pretty straight. Uh, you could use a little bit of trim if you need to, if they are not straight, which mine are pretty good. So. The servos are going to buzz a little bit, so don't worry about that. That's just the way um, they are right now because we're still in the setup process, setup stages. Go ahead and put that on there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pick the. Let me get that out of the way here. Wow, these LEDs are awesome. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pick the top, the top hole. Okay, we're going to z-bend that in there, right in there. Swing this down, and we're going to notice right away that this one is way too short. The ailerons need to be nice and level, so we're going to go ahead and lengthen this control clevis. I know that these build videos tend to be a little long and boring, but you know it is a build, and we need to build these things. So I'm glad that you y'all are able to hang with me there for a little while at least. Okay, we're going to pick the second two the bottom hole, which is the middle hole on the control clevis. And that looks about straight there. Okay, so we're going to call that pretty good. So we snap that, push this little rubber O-ring up, and call that one pretty much done. Okay, I'm going to go to this side here. 
Then we're going to do the same thing. We are going to go to the top hole. Swirl that around. And right away, this one is right close, pretty close. We're going to check it. Go to the middle hole. And we look, it looks to be a little, it actually looks pretty good there. We're going to call that pretty good there. We'll check it again once we flip the, the plane back onto our landing gear here. Check the wing struts once again. Wing struts are good. Okay, this is the best part that I like about uh, FMS kits. And the reason why is, uh, I was explaining to you, these in here are on uh, set screws. So right now, no matter what distance this is, you can fine tune this distance later on. So right now, we can go to the, aileron, uh, the elevator side, loosen the set screw here, and right away, you can play with this distance. See that? You can play with that distance. Actually, I just messed up. It popped out of the, the little easy, easy connector there, so we just push it right back in. That's how easy it is. So right now, we're going to go ahead and put this right here to the middle hole, which, uh, yeah, we're... The, uh, the O-rings are in here. I did not install them on there, so we're just not going to do that for now. We'll do it later because that's later on, you know, like small, tedious stuff you can do on the setup later. So right now, we're going to go ahead and do it without for the sake of making these videos a little shorter. Okay. So that is pretty much in there. Okay. And it is inside the easy connector here. So we're going to go ahead and basically what you want to do here is you want to make sure the elevators are level with each other and with, uh, with the horizontal stabilizer. And that's pretty good right there because you can still fine tune it later on by adjusting the push rod clevis. So that's good there. So we're going to call that good. We're going to go ahead and tighten this set screw down. There you go. When you tighten this, the rod's going to flex a little bit. So you want to try to get your hand on it and then tighten it so it doesn't flex too much. There you go. Okay. And then now for the rudder. Let's go ahead and loosen this here. Okay, that's loose enough. And we are going to use the middle hole once again. If I can even get this clevis open. There we go. Actually, this one lines up better with the farthest outside hole. So we're going to use the farthest outside hole. Okay, make sure the rudder is nice and straight, which it is. And then make sure this is straight with the nose wheel, steerable nose gear. And grab a hold of that and go ahead and tighten that down. And while you have the servo area open here, you might as well check to make sure all these Phillips screws go into the servos and the, the uh, servo, servo control arm, servo horns are... Uh, Nice and tight. So that pretty much is it. So I think we can go ahead and put the cover for the servo bay back on here. Okay, this battery is going to go ahead and just to kind of droop here once I flip the plane, but that's okay because we're still setting up. Okay, there you go. Okay, so right now we're going to give it a control surface check here. Okay, we have, let me see, it's all in the frame here. Okay, we have elevator. This is up. This is down. We have rudder. Okay, our rudder is reversed, which it didn't look like it earlier, but it sure is. So we're going to go ahead and reverse our rudder. Okay, that's left, right, left, right. And then aileron. Let's see here. We got aileron. Aileron is about good. We need to do a little bit of sub trimming. There, pretty flush left, right, and we're pretty much good there. So now we're pretty much at our last step, which we are going to install the propeller. Okay, let's go ahead and unplug unplug the battery for now. Okay, we're going to go ahead and shut the radio off here. And we are going to install the propeller. But before I do that, I have a little bit loose of a nose wheel here, so we're going to check it one, once more and find out why it's so loose there. screw was just a little bit loose and that's pretty much it okay okay so let's go ahead and install the propeller which is the last step here and I think she's pretty much ready to go there's a bag of extra screws and stuff here too that's awesome they give you extra parts okay let's see we get the spinner backing back on there 
Okay. Okay, and then we get the prop here, which is directional. You want to make sure that the airfoil side uh, is the front. Let's go ahead and get this. Nice. Actually, the, the prop backing actually will show you. It actually fits perfect into the, the curvature of that propeller there. So okay. there's a little prop nut there. Let's go ahead and get the prop nut all the way on there. And I need to get a driver real quick here. Let's go ahead and flip her this way. This way hit. Nope. Okay, we can just go ahead and use needle nose pliers for now. So grab the propeller and we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. That's about good there. They don't need to be like super, super tight because they are. Uh, Propeller is actually, the torque of it is actually going in the direction that the screw is tightening down on, so they don't usually come loose. Look at that beautiful little spinner back, the spinner top there. So that goes on, and then all we have to do is screw the nose piece of the spinner on there. And you're pretty much done there. That is how quickly this little airplane builds there. The cowling pops back on right there. If you choose to use a little bit of glue on there, you can probably use a little bit of glue. I don't see any need for it, but that is pretty much built. We're going to go ahead and uh, push the camera out wider and uh, call this a wrap here and talk about the uh, Cessna right, pilots. Thank you for hanging in there with this build of the FMS Cessna 182 Skyline. This is otherwise known on our website as the Sky Trainer. Uh, just the perfect little park flyer. The absolute scale appearance of this thing is absolutely amazing. It looks so nice here. You pretty much went through the whole build with me. We went step by step, and um, you know, with very minimal time, you could be building one of these and at your local park flying one of these beautiful little Cessnas. Cessnas are always one of my favorite. I have stick time in the actual real Cessna 182s, and they fly amazing, especially model Cessnas. Every single one of them that I've flown so far, they fly great. I can't wait to bring you this flight review here of this little FMS Cessna, of this little FMS uh, Sky Trainer, as we call it. Pretty much ready to go now. As you can see, she's sitting here on the uh, workbench here. We've made a mess, but that's the fun part about building is you make a mess and then uh, you clean it up. <laughs> uh, you can see the, the tip, the vertical stabilizer tip LED flashing there. You have a leading edge. You have a, a light there on the lead, leading edge your LED and your nav lights on your left and your right there. What a beautiful little scale says. Now, I don't think I've seen any in this size yet with uh, full LEDs. We're pretty much set up, ready to go here. Some more fine tuning and dialing for the surfaces and uh, some control settings that you want to play with and pretty much ready to go. I'm going to power her up. That little beautiful sound of the brushless outrunner. Uh, you know, this is electric flight at, at its best. You know, th back a few years ago, this was never heard of. Quiet, clean, inexpensive, and just had a ton of fun with like almost no build time. Anyway, my name is Pete. Thank you all always for your support. Make sure you like us on Twitter. I'm sorry, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, check out YouTube for all the new reviews and uh, Ask Pete webisodes and flights and all kinds of fun stuff coming up. This is the FMS Cessna 182 Skyline, available at bananahobby.com. My name is Pete. Thank you guys and gals always for your support, and we'll see you at the field.